There comes a man who, thinking not of selfish greed or pining for the rabble's futile cheers, lives but to serve, and serving lives indeed beloved and honored through the ageless years. These are lines from a poem dedicated to Paul Harris by Herman H. Hansen. To Paul Harris, the beloved founder of Rotary and President Emeritus of Rotary International. Here is Paul in his Chicago office in the Secretariat of Rotary International, still giving generously of himself to the organization which he founded here in Chicago 37 years ago. That handsome desk came all the way from Australia, a gift from the Rotarians of that island continent. Those photographs on the wall are a few of Paul's souvenirs of his visits to Rotary clubs around the world. In the life of an individual, 37 years is a long time, but it's a brief time indeed in the life of a social movement. Rotary is still in its infancy, fathoming new depths, exploring new fields. But in the less than two score years since the first Rotary Club was organized, the ideas of the founder of Rotary and those whom he associated with him have become ideals, ideals which are not confined to any one group, one community, or one nation. They have been accepted by men of practically all nationalities, all political and all religious beliefs, by 210,000 business and professional men in more than 50 countries throughout the world. We were about to interview Paul, but as he evidently is leaving for his delightful home in the Morgan Park residential area of Chicago, let's follow him and visit Comley Bank, as so many Rotarians have done. Here is the Harris home, which for 30 years has been a rendezvous for Rotarians from all parts of the world. Paul and Jean Harris named their home Comley Bank after the section of Edinburgh, Scotland, where Jean lived as a child. In this garden, the Garden of Goodwill, trees of friendship have been planted by Rotarian guests from many countries of the world. To Comley Bank, there runs a well-worn path from the home of Sylvester Sheely, Paul's friend of 45 years standing, to whom he first confided his dreams for the organization which was to become the Rotary Club of Chicago. Sylvester Sheely was the first president of the first Rotary Club in the world. Here he is now to pay Paul and Jean a neighborly visit. Many people have wondered what there is about Rotary which appeals equally to men of goodwill in the countries of the Americas, in Europe, in Asia, in South Africa, and in Australia. What was the inspiration that led Paul Harris to found a club and a movement which have become a living force in the lives of men? Perhaps these questions may best be answered by Paul himself, aided by Chess Perry, Rotary's longtime general secretary. Hello, Chess. Hello, Paul. I'm mighty glad to see you. Thank you. Sit down. What have you there? A letter from a Rotarian in Western Canada who is preparing a history of his Rotary Club and asking us a number of questions about the organizing of the club some 30 years ago. Of course, we can answer them from our historical record. But uh, as you will see, to three of them, he requests a direct reply from you. First of all, he asks, what was the original purpose Paul Harris had in mind in organizing the Rotary Club of Chicago? You have heard that one before. Well, Chess, when I first came to Chicago. I lived in the center of the city where hardly anyone knew anyone else, at least socially. I conceived the idea which developed into the Rotary movement one night back in 1900, when after dinner in the suburban home of a Chicago lawyer friend, I took a walk with him through that suburban neighborhood. We stopped to visit at several stores and shops, and I was impressed by the fact that my fellow lawyer and had a personal, friendly acquaintance with the proprietor. Uh, something like a small town, wasn't it, Paul? Yes, indeed. I had come to Chicago four years prior to that time, but my law clients were business friends, not social friends. This visit uh, to a Chicago suburb set me to wondering why I couldn't make social friends out of at least some of my business friends. And I resolved to organize a club 
which would band together socially a group of businessmen who also would be mutually helpful. Uh, you say mutually helpful, Paul. May we tell our correspondents that was the basic idea behind the organization of the first Rotary Club? Oh, yes, it was, Ted. When the idea of a club first occurred to me, its utilitarian aspect made a very strong appeal. Because I was a stranger in a large city, handicapped in practicing law because of my lack of acquaintance. However, during the years from 1900 to 1905, while I kept thinking and planning for the club, this utilitarian aspect, so far as I was concerned, became subordinate to the desire to create an organization which would bring together representative business and professional men in friendship and fellowship. As the club developed, the idea of mutual helpfulness gave way to the idea of general helpfulness, now epitomized in the ideal of service. I think that should answer the first question from our Canadian friend. Yes, I think it should, Paul. And now for his second question. Did Paul Harris have any idea back in 1905 that Rotary would grow to be such an organization as it is today? The answer to that is no. When the first Rotary Club was organized, I had no thought whatsoever that it would develop into a worldwide movement. But my ambitions were soon aroused. I became convinced that the idea of Rotary could be developed into an important movement. And with other members of the club, I began to encourage the extension of Rotary to other cities. New Rotary Clubs were organized in San Francisco, Seattle, New York, Boston, Minneapolis, St. Louis, and New Orleans. In 1910, Rotary extended to Canada at Winnipeg and became an organization with an international vision and an increasing nobility of purpose. And that brings us to our third question. Our correspondent is not only interested in the past, but he also wants to know what you, as the founder of Rotary, think about the future of Rotary. Thinking of the future of Rotary, Seth, I am an incurable optimist. The Rotary movement, which but a few years ago consisted of a small group of men of diverse political parties and religious faiths, has grown out of its swaddling clothes. Successes thus far achieved give rise to the expectation of greater usefulness in years to come. My hope for the future is that Rotarians will continue to be ambassadors of goodwill to high and low, rich and poor, to all races, to devotees of all religious faiths, and to members of all political parties, that Rotarians will be purveyors of tolerance, forbearance, helpfulness, kindliness, neighborliness, and friendliness, that through our worldwide Rotary Fellowship, our business and professional men, united in the ideal of service, we shall achieve our goal of international understanding, goodwill, and cooperation for the welfare of all mankind.